It's draft day. Finally, it's here. And here's my mock draft. Find out where your favorite prospects land on my first and final mock draft next on Locked on NBA Big Board. Welcome into Locked On NBA Big Board. My name's Leaf Tuline. I'm a frequent contributor. You guys know me here. Uh, to Locked On NBA Big Board, Rafael Barlow and I chop it up from time to time. Occasionally, it's Richard Stamen and I. And Rafael Barlow has given me the nickname The Grinder because I watch more college basketball than anyone else. And with no college basketball to watch of late, other than film, that's what I've dove, dove my, into, started watching even more film. And now the day has come where the NBA draft comes and we see where the players land. So I'll give you guys a mock draft. I typically don't like to do mock drafts, but it, it's it's the one day of the year where I think it's most applicable. Today's show is sponsored by Bird Dogs. Awesome shorts. Been wearing them ever since I got them when I returned from the combine, and I could not recommend them highly enough. All right, let's get right to it. I'm going to answer this mock draft with who I expect to be taken, not my personal preference. And if I disagree with what a team's doing, I'll let, I'll let you know and say who I might take based off what's been constructed in front. So without further ado, let's talk about who's going number one. Oh, or that, that's, that's a pretty easy one. That's Victor Wenbenyama. Victor Wenbenyama for me uh, is the best prospect I've evaluated. I wasn't old enough to evaluate LeBron James. But I think Wenbenyama is easily the best that I've evaluated since I've been a call since I've been a basketball fan, which has been the pretty much the entirety of my life. LeBron, when he was coming out through high school, was when I turned three years old. So, what is Victor Wenbenyama? He's a phenomenon. Uh, he's been a known commodity since he was 13. He got better from when he was in the NBA, uh, from when he started in the pro league to now when he's about to enter the enter the NBA. He's seven foot five with power forward skills. I believe the reigning defensive player of the year, Jaron Jackson Jr., is a comparison for Wembenyama, but add four inches of height, probably better ball skills, uh, better defensive upside as he's just an otherworldly defensive player. And that's what you're getting. And San Antonio is going to get their third perennial all-star caliber center with their third number one pick. It's pretty awesome. Scoot Henderson would be my second pick. So this is where I said I would disagree but all signs indicate Brandon Miller to Charlotte. And that's not to say I'm low on Brandon Miller. If you guys remember, go back to July of this past year, about 11 months ago now, strangely enough. And I did a podcast with Rafael Barlow saying he was my top college player coming into the year. And he was ranked about 15th by most. So I've been singing the praises of Brandon Miller. That said, I would take Scoot Henderson here for Charlotte just because I think he's that dynamic of a player that you don't have to worry about fit with LaMelo Ball. You want to take the guy who can change your franchise, and I think Scoot Henderson is more capable of that. That said, it looks like Brandon Miller is going to be the pick. What is Brandon Miller good at? Let's talk about Brandon Miller and just give you guys a a mock draft, strengths, weaknesses, what you can expect from Brandon Miller, both in the short term and in the long run. Brandon Miller is easily the best perimeter college basketball player. He he combines silky smooth shooting, size, and coordination to be a walking 15 to 25 points immediately in the college game. He dominated the game for Alabama for what was the best team in college basketball for the majority of the year. He used his size to drive, rebound, defend. Uh, He's good at all of those things. He had so much gravity that he learned to manipulate defenses and pass the ball. He reminds me a little bit of Paul George in the way that he gets to spots and elevates and hits tough shots, but he doesn't have the top-tier athleticism Paul George possessed when he was in Indiana, uh, nor maybe quite the elite ability defensively. So I will couple him between two Indiana Pacers wings, Paul George and Danny Granger. I think that that's he's somewhere in between. I'm not sure he'll ever be the, the best top option in the NBA, but he's going to be a guy who can score easily, defend, and be a plus player on both sides of the ball, and he's got – Big upside, but a tremendously high floor. And I hesitate to say superstar talent, but I think he's got very much very real all-star talent. All right, number three, the Blazers. What will the Portland Trailblazers do? That's the question. That's been the question, and it will continue to be the question. Are they going to make a trade? Well, for the sake of this podcast, because I can't project trades, I'll, I'll talk about teams I think 
can move down. And the Blazers are one. For the sake of this podcast, because I cannot project the trades as to who would be there, I, I'm just going to go say Scoot Henderson's going to the Blazers. He's learning from Damian Lillard, playing alongside Damian Lillard. Uh, don't be surprised if Portland makes a trade. I mean, speaking of Paul George, he's been rumored to be in, in contention. The Blazers really like Bam out of bio. Um, but that said, let's talk about the draft player. Scoot Henderson is sensational. I, I talked about how I would have taken him at two, and I still would, and I still won't rule it out, but all signs indicate Brandon Miller is going to be that guy. So Scoot Henderson played for the G League Ignite, and he is a wrecking ball, just absolute explosive power, 18 points a game, six and a half assists per game, five, oh, a little over five rebounds per game able to get to the rim at will. His burst is top-notch. He's honed his craft the past two seasons in the G League, and it has combined that burst with a bit of feel and finesse for the game. He, I mean, if we're throwing out comparisons, I think he's the closest thing. I'm not going to say he's going to be prime Derrick Rose, but he's the closest thing to prime Derrick Rose we've seen. Like, there have been fast guards. De'Aaron Fox, unbelievably fast, but he doesn't have the power, the explosiveness, like a running back hitting the hole that, Scoot Henderson possesses. Scoot Henderson also is well ahead of Derrick Rose in terms of where his jump shot is coming into the NBA. People forget at Memphis, Derrick Rose was a hesitant jump shooter. And even in the early years with the Bulls, he was a hesitant jump shooter. Uh, I think Scoot Henderson has a few deficiencies, but his pros far outweigh the cons. If you were to look at Henderson's deficiencies, they're basically, he must improve his shot even further he was only 33% from the uh, on catch and shoots, only 58% of the rim, floaters all right. He can rely on mid-range pull-ups a little too heavily rather than forcing the action to the rim. And he be can become a better uh, at reading screens, like how he can pass the players off pick and roll. But what is what he's great at, he's great at. Like There's not many people in the world uh, at, at his age or just in the world, period, at play basketball that can do what he can do. He's got an amazing... Uh, ability to get downhill, finish smoothly. He's got enormous hands. He's able to hang in the air. He knocks down shots in the mid-range. Uh, he was 45% of them pull-up jumpers as an 18-year-old last year, and he had many games with over 10 assists, coupling his ability to get to the rim with you know, making his team better. All right, number four. So this is where the draft truly starts for me because the top three in some variety are going to be the same three players. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be Miller and Scoot. I wouldn't be stunned if somehow Scoot goes too, just because I think he's that awesome. I think a team could think that too. Uh, Amon Thompson was long rumored to be the Rockets' favorite. Then Cam Whitmore got some run as the Rockets' favorite at four. I, I don't know. Uh, it gets interesting right here. Where does where do the Rockets go with this pick? Do they take a guy like Amon Thompson and put him in an unbelievably athletic backcourt with Jalen Green? That's what I think they'll do. If you'd asked me a couple days ago, I would have said they'd take Cam Whitmore, who I think they were infatuated with. But rumor has it Whitmore's falling down. So could I be falling for smoke? Sure. But sometimes where there's smoke, there's a fire. So Amon Thompson, what's he good at? He's a tremendous athlete. He's he's billed as a 6'7 John Morant if, if he hits his absolute ceiling, someone who can defensively change a game and offensively despite a lack of shooting. And he really does lack shooting. Uh, he can impact the game so enormously by getting downhill and creating for others. That that's what you might be getting in Amon Thompson. Like it, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, what what else is there? I, I mean, he he's a guy that would would be the point guard. He wouldn't help your shooting, but he'd be able to create help. Jalen Green. They play really fast. Tari Eason, Jabari Smith Jr., Alper and Shangun. Be an interesting team. It really would. Uh, I'm not sure this will be the pick that this is just what I think as of couple, like if I, if I think about the draft and I, I think, man, you know what? Like the, the Rockets have so much athleticism, but so little clear cut, you know what? Like, this is what we're going to do. You might as well take the guy with the highest ceiling as opposed to a fit guy, just because if you're going to rebuild, at least you have a chance of this guy being a superstar and being who you build around. That's important to me. That That is interesting to me, and that's what I would do. You know, that that's where this gets, that, that's where the draft gets super, super fascinating because 
teams have different visions for their players that they're already on their rosters. The Rockets are so young. They've got a three pick in Jabari Smith, who they hardly ran plays for last year. They got Jalen Green, who's already a 20 point a game scorer, who seems to be an afterthought when talking about ascension to stardom. That's not how that, that team uh, thinks. That's how we think. So this is where it gets interesting. But before we dive into the fifth peak, which I think is really where the draft begins, let me tell you about some Im- impressive uh, help that you can be getting sooner rather than later. And let me tell you about a show sponsor for the NBA channel of Locked On. That's better help. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else thinks from uh, thinks about you, what everyone else needs from you, and you never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. Like I, sometimes you just need a break and you got to prioritize yourself. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you all the tools to find balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get your 10% off for your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. Welcome back into Locked on NBA Big Board. And this is the fascinating juncture of the draft. To me, I think this is where the draft begins, four and five. So we're on pick five. What do the Detroit Pistons do? For a long time, I thought that one of the Rockets or the Pistons would take Cam Whitmore, who has been heavily entrenched in all the rumors that that he'll go a top five and they love the fit, uh, the Rockets do, and the Pistons, if he's there, would be a pick. So if Cam Whitmore were to go four, for the uh, for the Rockets, then the Pistons are in a bit of a pickle because the best player available by almost anyone's board would be Amon Thompson, but they do not need a point guard. Now Amon Thompson's gone fourth to the Pistons, uh, to the Rockets, and now the Pistons have whoever they'd like. Uh, and that, that's really an important juncture. Rumors say that he disappoint, Cam Whitmore disappointed in his workouts for the Pistons. I wonder if that's smoke to disincentivize the Rockets to take him and then the Pistons get their guy after all. But I'm going to go with Jarris Walker for the Pistons uh, as who I think the pick will be. Just because I I feel like if a team doesn't like a player, they they wouldn't necessarily say that just to get him. I feel like that's a a little strange. Maybe the silence would be more intelligent. So Jarris Walker, really a a talented defender, someone that I think might be the second best defender in this class, which is a defensively oriented and talented class. Uh, that would be someone I would be very intrigued for it for the Pistons as a jazz fan. He'd be the pipe dream for me, but it looks like that dream is short lived as number six. This is where the magic select and the magic are redundant in a lot of positions They're They've got their star in Palo Bencaro. They've got their Robin in Franz Wagner. So where do they add? They would have loved for Amon Thompson to be available. I don't think it's quite time for Anthony black, though. There are some ties to Anthony black at six for the Magic. I don't think they'll take him uh, with already having Jalen Suggs. I'm going to go with Osar Thompson. Osar Thompson, phenomenal athlete, someone who could develop into a better ball handler and turn into a point guard. But right now, projects as a wing, wing defender, someone who specializes on defense and cutting and playing off the ball with upside to be a playmaker. And should he be a really good playmaker, could be a star. The Magic have uh, the luxury of having their franchise piece, so could go for a fit player. That's a little bit interesting. Uh, I'm not sure that one will be the pick, but I, I do think he he's who I'd lean to take here. At number seven, the Pacers love Taylor Hendricks. But I think when I would think about the draft, if Taylor Hendricks were available and Cam Whitmore were available, I think that Cam Whitmore is the more appealing prospect. I really do. Cam Whitmore is a six foot six, two hundred thirty five pound freight train with a forty one inch vertical, who scores the ball well, efficient according to analytics and his percentages, shooting the ball, attacking the rim in transition and in isolation. I think there's too much to like for an up and coming athletic team. the The only reason that Hendricks might be an option, 
and maybe what the Pacers favor should if if the board has fallen the way it shakes out. I could very much see them taking Jarris Walker. The reason they may favor Hendricks over Cam Whitmore, though, would be that Hendricks is taller and the Pacers want a bigger player because they they don't have the biggest front court, um, especially with Miles Turner likely on the outs. All right, that could be interesting. So now who's the pick? I, I think it would be uh, Cam Whitmore. Uh, personally, as a Jazz fan, I, I would rather have Cam Whitmore and I have him higher on my board by a number of spots over Taylor Hendricks, which is why I think he'll be the pick here. Number eight, the Wizards. The Wizards take Anthony Black. That's one of the more heavily entrenched rumors right now, that the Wizards are super infatuated by Anthony Black. They they think Anthony Black is this star player uh, that could really learn from Chris Paul, learn from a guy in a crafty vet, a situation where he's not going to be pressured to change the franchise immediately, but has the reins to to make big strides early and often in his career. That's a good situation for Anthony Black. That that's, leaves the Jazz, my Utah Jazz, in a very, very strange spot. So what do the Jazz do? The rumor is that the Jazz love Bilal Koulibaly. I've been doing Locked On Jazz. And I, I think that the Jazz could take Bilal Koulibaly. They could take Taylor Hendricks. Hendricks, to me, doesn't scream exactly what the Jazz need, though I, I know some of the people in Utah really, really like him. So I think those are the two players that are being chosen between right here. I think the rumor would be if the Jazz were to trade up, uh, sorry, were to pick Koulibaly, they'd likely try to trade up. That's what Mark Stein reported a while ago. Rafael Barlow of Locked on NBA Big Board has talked about that with me on here before, that if should the Jazz pick ninth, Koulibaly is taken, then likely they'll try to trade up for a guard of their choosing, whoever that might be, between the dearth of guards of Jalen hood Shafino, Kobe Bufkin, Kaysen Wallace, uh, Nick Smith Jr., Keontae George. The Jazz would be aggressive in trying to find the guy that they prefer because the Jazz's necessity is a guard. Well, that that's an interesting situation in its own right. I'll say not my personal pick, um, and I'll be open about that. I think Bilal Koulibaly is a good player, but I'll say based off the rumors I'm hearing, uh, I think Bilal Koulibaly is the most likely pick for the Jazz at at number nine. And that is, uh, it's a little premature for a stopping point, but I want to I wanna talk about FanDuel, somewhere where you can place what you think, think are good ideas Right now, there's a little bit of a lull in sports after the Jazz and all the other teams after the Nuggets, their Jazz's rivals, won the NBA Finals. Baseball is reigning supreme right now. So let me tell you about FanDuel. Coming up next, though, we're going to talk about the rest of the draft. But let me tell you about FanDuel first. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, New customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000. Yes, you heard me correctly. And back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to join today. I mean, I'm not the biggest baseball guy, but I am But I am knowledgeable about the game. And a team that I'd look out for happens to be my favorite team, the Boston Red Sox. When they're not playing the AL East, they're, they're dominating. Right now, they're riding a six-game win streak, sweeping the Yankees and beating the Twins. The AL Central is a very poor division. They're losing. They may beat each other, but they're really poor. The Red Sox are last in the AL East, riding a six-game win streak, and uh, are well above ours. So when they're not playing the AL East, that might be a team that is lower on value. You guys could look into, looking into picking, as well as Talk about the NBA draft. FanDuel covers it all. They got that. They've got tennis. They got darts, boxing, bowling. Any anything you could want, FanDuel's got it all. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. And that is what you need to know about FanDuel as the NBA draft is is becoming a big deal for us. But baseball is a big deal for FanDuel right now. All right, welcome back in to Locked on NBA Big Board. I'm Leif Tulin filling in for Rafael Barlow. This is my mock draft, my one and only one. I'm a little torn on some of my picks. I mentioned that they may not be the picks I would make, but what I think will happen. So let, let's talk about something that's really been cool that happened on Locked on NBA Big Board and through different 
uh, locked on NBA channels that you guys should really look into. That's the ultimate mock draft that happened on our channel. I recommend checking it out. It's where myself, Richard Stamen, Rafael Barlow, and I, we, we all we all provide analysis on picks made by the locked on hosts. So, you know, whoever you want your team to pick, maybe your host picked them. And then we'll provide analysis on whether that draft was a good draft for your team. That pit specific selection was good or not. It's been an awesome product, and it really gets you set up for today, the NBA draft that's coming up soon. Welcome back to Locked On NBA Big Board. Yeah, so I told you my top nine picks. That leaves a lot of talent on the board. And that's where we're talking about how the depth of the board checks out. Number 10, I think this is a very interesting pick for the Mavericks because if Hendricks were gone, I think Derek Lively is a no-brainer for the Mavericks. I still think Derek Lively is the pick. The, the Mavericks need a pick-and-roll, rim-running big, a baby Tyson Chandler to fill in and play alongside Luka Doncic and accelerate the immediate timetable because they have that franchise-altering talent. That's Luka Doncic. They also have Kyrie Irving. They need to they need a defender, and Lively is the best defender possible. So Dallas selects Derek Lively at number 10. At number 11, the Oklahoma City Thunder are at 12. And this is this is something that's interesting because they love to take potential. The Magic have a lot of players that are similar. The Magic have already gotten a player in Osar Thompson that's a very defensively oriented. So what do they need? They need shooting. Taylor Hendricks has slipped. Taylor Hendricks is the pick at number 11. Hendricks from UCF it reminds me a lot of a guy that was likened to uh, to be the number one pick last year. He was, he was the favorite for the magic to take. They ended up taking Bancaro and he won rookie of the year. And it was the right decision. That's someone I like more than this guy, Jabari Smith jr. But everyone in, in magic County and, and people who listen to this, I, I know I went on a few podcasts. A lot of people thought, thought taking someone other than Jabari Smith jr. Was crazy. So why not take a guy who fits that same billing with a little less pressure on him at number 11, Taylor Hendricks spaces, the floor defends, Defends multiple positions. Is a secondary rim protector. Uh, can slide his feet. He can shoot the three on the pick and pop. He's athletic. He, he has a lot of dunks in transition. That would I think that would be a steal. I think that the Magic wouldn't be mad if they took him at six and now they get him at eleven. That would be phenomenal. At number twelve, Thunder. I mentioned upside. A player that could study Shea Gilgis Alexander from this class that I think could really really learn would be Kobe Bufkin. They've got a plethora of guards. Josh Giddy, Jalen Williams, and that's Santa Clara Jalen Williams. Obviously, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Trey Mann. They've got all these players. But I think that's the guy with the most potential here. I mean, Koulibaly's already been taken, and that would be the one that you you typically associate with a Thunder-like pick, someone that, that's swinging for the fences like Usman Jang. Well, Bufkin, in this case, is someone that when he was given the ball and given the keys to the ship at Michigan – really thrived, and he's a bit of a draft darling. That The Thunder love those type of players. I, I If I were the Thunder, I'd consider going for a guy like Lively, should he slip. He's not here in this one. If Hendricks fell, that would be a great pick, fits them to a T. Maybe they look at Grady Dick or Jordan Hawkins, add shooting to a team that I would say is very, very paint dependent. I remember doing a, a statistics for a jazz, uh, jazz game because I do I work for the Jazz, and I believe that they scored 55% of their points from the paint. Something ridiculous. That may be off, but th their numbers, maybe they scored 56 points in the paint per game. So something absolutely absurd where they scored so many points in the point paint and putting pressure on the rim and getting to the free throw line. So maybe they find someone to uh, leave a little more space and get some shooting. But I, I'll take Bufkin right now. Another thing to keep in mind is I mentioned that the Jazz are a team that, that could want to trade up because they really, th especially if they take Koulibaly, they want to get a guard, and Bufkin may be the guard with the most potential left. So that would be something I would would consider keeping your eyes out for. That that would be something that I could see the Jazz trading up and getting to 12 or 13, and the Thunder may be amenable to that because they love future assets. The Jazz, they already have one of the Jazz's future assets. The Jazz have a top 10 protected pick. Uh, anyway. Moving on from the Jazz, but don't be surprised if there's a trade up in that vicinity. Just try to get their guy if there is one still available. Uh, at 13, I'm going to go with Keontae George. Keontae George to the Toronto Raptors. It's not the, the appeal that you, you're used to from a Masai Ujiri built team, but 
there's new coaching, more emphasis on scoring, and I think he's the best natural-born scorer still available. You can make a case for Jalen Huchifino. You can make a case for Cason Wallace to be the, this pick right here, maybe even Nick Smith. But Keontae George has the best size and scoring potential of anyone there. The Raptors already have their size and, and, and depth on the wings and other people who can be supplementary ball handlers. So I'll go for the guy with the most scoring potential. And to me, that's Keontae George. And to round out my lottery, I'm going to take Cason Wallace to the New Orleans Pelicans, someone with potential but a very high floor. It could be the defensive anchor, learn and not have too much playmaking responsibility playing alongside Brandon Ingram, learn from C.J. McCollum, have Zion Williamson take a ton of pressure off of you, great defensive wing in, Trey, uh, in Herb Jones, shooting and two-way wing in Trey Murphy. That's a really good landing spot for Cason Wallace, who's often been thought of as a top-10 pick. But he has has fallen off a little bit, and and I think that could be a great landing spot for Casey Wallace. So that's my mock draft. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell me where you think that my my estimations of what teams will do are wrong. Maybe what my preferences are. Are they right? Are they wrong? What would you do for your team? I want to hear below. We're a, we're a day out from draft day. I know I said it's draft day at the beginning. I love the draft, and I'm getting my days messed up. I'm doing way too many podcasts, but I can't wait for the draft. And we're gonna have you covered all week long, including to today on uh, the, the day of the draft today and Richard Stamen, and Raphael Barlow will be on foot at the draft with the excellent coverage there. And also tune into NBA big board and some locked on streams as Nick Engstadt, host of locked on Mavs and myself will be breaking down every pick from the first round and beyond with help, the help from locked on hosts. So, for your best coverage, come follow us on Locked On NBA Big Board. Let me know what you think below. And until the draft, best of luck to your teams. And as always, have a great draft.